citizens of the internet. It's been a minute. And I don't know why I stopped using that um, sign on either. The uh, citizens of the internet thing. It's saddening how fucking stupid America has become in the era of Trump. It's almost like people think that the government was completely trustworthy before Trump and no politicians lied before Trump. And then Trump came along and just ruined everything. And um, after Trump, it's all sunshine and rainbows, folks. And you can just you can just trust the government and the media to uh, do right by you. Who believes that? Who is dumb enough to believe that? So one of the first things I would like to talk about today with y'all is um, your boy RFK Jr. Now, I'm going to qualify this by saying, first of all, we're nowhere near close to an election. Okay. So that's that's kind of the, the first thing I'd like to say in regards to this. So we got a long ways to go. Um, and we'll see how things shake out. But RFK is already kind of bringing up things and and stepping on landmines that, I mean, this is the thing. I love his, his um, honesty on the COVID stuff. I love his um, willingness to say things that are third rail in the public debate because we definitely need that as a country. And as a Kennedy, he's a person who has the kind of, um, you know, gravitas to get away with it. Um, but he's he's scaring me a little bit because and let me show you this real quick. This is crazy. And I, I posted this on Twitter and it, it didn't get much traction, but. Just, just listen to this. I want to talk about someone else who's, who's in town, Roger Waters, yep. Pink Floyd. You're uh, obviously Jewish. He's been coming out and, with a lot of Israeli and Israeli, and he's been coming out with a lot of very anti-Israel uh, and what people perceive to be. Anti so right off the bat, Gene Simmons had bad takes on COVID. He was one of those guys like kill the unvaccinated, and I'm exaggerating, but. He's he's Jewish and Israeli. Now listen to this take. Now listen to his take on on Roger Waters. Listen to this. His Semitic comments. I'm not sure that's the same thing. Right. So so, what's your position about Roger Waters? Well, first of all, he's a very talented guy. He's written some of the most wonderful music, along with Floyd, um, many many decades, and it's obviously yeah. held up. And he's got lots of fans. There is something to be said for keeping your political and other beliefs off the stage. His choice is to use the stage as a platform to further his point of view. There is a difference between a political statement about Israel and about anti-Semitism. By the way, anti-Semitism also involves Arabs. The, the mm -hmm. definition of a Semite includes the Arab world. So look at Gene Simmons talking sense into Piers Morgan. Gene Simmons, and uh, honestly, it let's let's hear that again. Let's just let's hear that again. What, let's let's just hear that one more time. Anti-Semitism. By the way, anti-Semitism. Yeah. All point of view. There is a difference between a political statement about Israel and about anti-Semitism. There is a difference between a political statement about Israel and anti-Semitism. Thank you very much, Gene. Thank you very much. America needs to hear this. By the way, anti-Semitism also involves Arabs. The, the mm -hmm. definition of a Semite includes the Arab world. So also I think something uh, American he's a well-meaning guy. I don't agree with his uh, point of views, of course. So do you think he's anti-Semitic or do you think he's anti-Israel no, as a he's, state? I think he is, uh, from my point of view, inflamed, angry about the political situation, mm -hmm. as we all are. You want there to be peace someplace. And look, I turn my, our attention to this wonderful fairy tale of a country uh, or their leprechauns and so on. Ireland, mm -hmm. the north and the south. Yeah. So it's been ongoing for God knows how long. And the divisions are deep if you're either Protestant or Catholic mm -hmm. or different. And I've visited uh, Parliament there. We're going to come to that. So right off the bat, you know, Let's applaud Gene Simmons for being a voice of reason 
around this whole Roger Waters thing because when I saw it, I thought this is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. What Roger Waters is doing is clearly a an act, um, and he's not wearing actual Nazi symbolisms. He's wearing two hammers crossed, and he's you know obviously he's trying to look like a fascist because that's part of the storyline. So uh, at the time, this all became like a scandal and people were, were outraged at, at um, Roger Waters. I said, yeah, next on the agenda, we need to put Keanu Reeves in jail for all the people he murdered in the John Wick movies, because that's how absolutely stupid this whole outrage is. And all credit due to Gene Simmons for not playing into it as, a, as an Israeli and a Jewish man. Uh, you know, I just I can't say enough good things about Gene Simmons for, you know, saying what he just said, mostly on the the Roger Waters issue, right? Uh, because so many people have been so stupid about that whole thing that, you know, it's just, it's, it's very, I, I want to say saddening, but um, it's, it's really just stupid more than anything. And so one of the um, really stupid things about it and the reason I opened with um, uh, discussing RFK Jr. is because Gene Simmons is actually to the left of RFK Jr. on this, on Israel, which is shocking. Um, but it's true. Gene Simmons has a more progressive take on Israel than presidential candidate RFK Jr. does. And I'm going to show you. I came with receipts. The guys in uh, Do Dissidents here were kind enough to do a bit about it. And I happen to see them doing it. And I think that their takes are pretty much the same as mine. Um, and I love these guys. So let's hear, let's watch them kind of break down RFK Jr.'s take on Israel. A, a recent controversy in which you found yourself more as a window to understand some of your broader views, which was the praise you originally offered for Roger Waters um, with regard to his stance on both the Ukraine, which he is opposed to in terms of the U.S. proxy war, as well as COVID. He was questioning a lot of the same orthodoxies you were. And then you ended up deleting that tweet where you praised him and made clear that the reason was because he had held views on Israel and Palestine that you didn't share. I want to ask you about the specific kind of divergencies that you have with him on that question. But before I get into that, why was it necessary for you to delete your praise for Roger Waters just because you disagree with him on Israel? Can't you praise him on Ukraine and COVID and then at the same time say, but there are other issues, including Israel, where I have differences? Why did you delete the praise entirely? Okay. Now, the thing that's so bizarre, before we get to his answer, the thing that's even bizarre about the question is that Roger Waters came under fire for dressing up as a fascist. The accusation from the jump was that he was anti-Semitic. So if RFK was going to jump in and defend him, isn't it to be assumed that he's defending him against charges of anti-Semitism? And given Roger Waters' very long and well-documented history of advocacy for the people of Gaza and the West Bank, he visited the West Bank in 2009. That's a video that we showed on our last show. Um, how was it that you were unaware of his position on Israel when you defended him against charges of anti-Semitism? What do you just you happen to like him for other reasons? So you came in half cocked and tried to defend him on an issue that you weren't even clear what the debate was about. Great point, Keaton. Great point. Right. I mean, do, do you follow and what the, I'm saying? The, this is a very more, bizarre timeline. The, the more we see of RFK, the more I feel like RFK plays as anti-establishment because he's establishment 2.0. And we're up to establishment 5.0. So right. when you, also when, a great when point, you Russ. Put, knock up against things that go all the way back to establishment 2.0 era, he's right there. He's a candidate. He's a candidate. The, the, these kinds of views about it. That is another great point. He's a Kennedy. He's part of the political elite. So, you know, I love the guy and I love what he's bringing to the debate, but Russ is absolutely correct. Israel and the Palestinians of Gaza. These are views out of uh, the 60s, out of the 70s. You know, he really hasn't modified it or developed. And also, 
Um, I, I don't know what he's thinking in terms of his chances or his hopes, but, uh, clearly he probably doesn't want to alienate some supporters and financiers, but I think a lot of That's people right saw there. him as some That's kind of the money, revival of, uh, Camelot. Remember Camelot was establishment. That was of the course. establishment of his, of its time. He, he represents an older, almost extinct establishment he is not this anti-establishment outsider looking to burn down the system he's looking to restore it to an earlier version indeed and here's his answer to this question well first of all the reasons that i praised him uh, was because of his position on the war, the, his position on COVID, which I thought was very courageous. Right. The reasons I praised him had nothing to do with why he was being attacked. Right. You understand how just kind of dumb this whole thing is? OK, I came in to defend him against charges of anti-Semitism, yet I actually agree with the people who are accusing him of, of anti-Semitism based on his position on the issue in question. Not very well thought out. Let's uh, let him keep going. At a time when nobody, and also his position on Julian Assange. Right. Uh, I I disagree. Um, I would say fiercely. It's like saying I defended OJ because I, th I think he's a good football player. Right. Oh yeah, he probably <laughs> I, did kill his I, wife, I was but I was <laughs> only talking about his touchdown against Denver. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's like defending OJ because you know he, he could run the ball. Right. I mean, I I, it's uh, just I, a I really enjoyed his performance <laughs> in the Naked Gun films. <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. With his criticism of Israel, and I'm not. You know, th there are there are enough people who characterize those um, political differences anti-Semitic, that me endorsing him uh, felt like I was buying into that, um, you know, into into something that was, that, you know, was abhorrent to me. Uh, now, remember what Gene Simmons just said? There is a difference between a political statement about Israel and about anti-Semitism. By the way, anti-Semitism also involves Arabs. The, the mm -hmm. definition of a Semite includes the Arab world. So I really disagree with his, I think, Roger, like many critics of Israel, first of all, People who criticize he said, he said like policy. five different things. It's, it's, it's a total. It's <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's it's a, a total a fucking train complete wreck. mess. <laughs> complete train wreck. Yeah, indeed. Not there were people who thought it was anti-Semitic. <laughs> Not necessarily me. In case you are a Pink Floyd fan, <laughs> right, exactly. this is anti-Semitic. But people who apply a different standard to judging Israel. Than they would to judging an Arab country. False. Um, I think then that you've crossed a line there. And I, what the, I first of all, he crossed no such line. He made no such statement. Look, the, the the moral calculus here is very simple. Israel is an apartheid state. They are an occupying force in lands that they were not supposed to expand to. They subjugate these people in these lands. They target them. In many cases, as we've covered in the few recent episodes, we just gun them down, blow them up. It, it, very, very simple. Very, very simple. He's, he's acting as though Roger Waters is committing some act of like moral hypocrisy by condemning Israel, yet giving Saudi Arabia a pass for the crimes against their people. It's, it's absolutely wait, wait, nonsense. Which, which his whole tour, that whole section, lists people from all around the world, all different countries who have right. been the victims of state violence. Right. He doesn't give Saudi Arabia a pass. He doesn't give any country a pass. He doesn't give any region a pass. Look, I Exactly. And I think, to be completely honest, I think the reason they're attempting to cancel Roger is because of his takes on Ukraine. Um, and what he actually does in his presentation is to compare... Um, what Israel did to the journalist, um, I think her name's Shireen Abdul something. I don't know her name, so forgive me. But she was murdered by Israeli forces, a journalist, a Palestinian journalist. And she's on a list that Roger shows in his show that includes people like Breonna Taylor, Philando Castile, 
um, and Frank, all kinds of people who were subjugated by state power, basically. And just to go back to what Gene Simmons said, there is a difference between a political statement about Israel and about anti-Semitism. By the way, anti-Semitism also involves Arabs. The, the mm -hmm. definition of a Semite includes the Arab world. So now there are all kinds of nuanced um, points to this debate. And it's like, I'm not an enemy of Israel. I don't not support Israel. I support Israel. But we also have to be even handed about what's going on here. I mean, the United States is arming Israel. Who's arming the Palestinians? You know, um, if there's it, there's a whole debate to be had here. And listen, I don't live in Israel. I don't pretend to know um, what the solution is. Um, but but I do know that I I do not support the brutalization of anyone whether it's Palestinians, whether it's people in China, whether it's people in the hoods in America, whether it's the brutalization of people in Flint, Michigan, who haven't had drinking water or Mississippi or, or you know, uh, people at protests, um, what they're doing to the people at the January 6th protest um, who were at that, like treating them like they're some kind of like they were like they, they none of them had guns. None of them, you know, it, it's 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 wild what's going on in this country this this kind of blind support for um for authority like this and um you know i and i'm not even anti-authority um completely <laughs> but it's that kind of pro authoritarian without question thing that leads to the types of scandals that you have in for example the catholic church where you know a deference to authority leads to massive outbreaks of child rape you know um you know, there has to be a balance there has to be who's watching the watchers type thing so um i just wanted to point that out and rfk it's funny i i love keaton and russ's commentary and that's another reason that um i included that <laughs> <laughs>